we're going to start off on the driver's side of the engine bay uh, with the air box. Uh, you notice I do have my battery disconnected, it's on the trickle charger. Um, everything I'm going to do, the battery is going to be disconnected, so uh, <clears throat> I won't connect that till way later in the end of the series of videos that we're going to do. So uh, it's a pretty straightforward uh, you know, situation here is we're going to remove the air box and the, and the whole uh, assembly here with the, the two hoses all the way up to the throttle body. And it's just a matter of starting from right to left, okay? So not that big of a deal. Um, we'll start from the right side, just unclip your air box. Simple enough. Um, next is I'm gonna, I'm gonna go right through over here and disconnect the uh, airflow sensor. So we'll disconnect this. Just like so, I'm gonna put it all the way. Um, the only tools that should be needed is you know, a Phillips screwdriver and maybe a pair of pliers just in case. Uh, well, actually we're going to need it depending on what type of uh, you know, hose clamps you have. Uh, we have factory hose clamps, so I will need the, the pliers for this. So uh, you can just work your way along. You can take this off a lot with assembly, as one assembly, or here I already had it loose. You can do it by parts, and I guess I'll do that since we're already here. Uh, disconnect all your vacuum hoses. Uh, inspect these, make sure they're not cracked. If they are, uh, you know, take the hose to a uh, park store and they should have uh, reels of hose that you can buy. Uh, usually you don't see them, they're in the back um, of all Riley's or, you know, AutoZone or something like that. They, they, they have these hoses, so if they're cracked, good time to replace it. Uh, so I'm just going to pull all the little clamps off. This is just a wire that holds the cables for the uh, cruise control. Um, if I'm mistaken, there's a, yeah, there is another hose back here at the back of the intake here. And twist that one off, and we can just start getting things out of the way. Good time to replace your air filter if you need to. Um, yeah, I need to do that. And actually, when you replace your filter, please vacuum. You know, you do yourself a favor to vacuum outside your box here. Uh, just in this instance, I got a bunch of dirt and, and grass and leaves and such, so, you know, do your maintenance. Uh, then we'll keep on moving right to left, right? So, the next hose is this one right here. It's your uh, crank breather hose. Uh, I guess return line or whatever. Just going to move that clamp off. Make sure that seal's broken. And yank that guy off. All right. They're gonna move over to the throttle body. Yeah, you're gonna be okay, guys. So simple enough. Phillips screwdriver. Gonna loosen up this clamp. Maybe not loose enough. Let's see. connected to it. We'll put this aside. Um, if you have to inspect this, make sure there's not excessive amount of oil in here. Um, if there is, this is a good time to clean it. Put this aside. All right, so that's the first step. So it's fairly simple. And we'll move on to the next. All right, so after uh, removing the air intake, it gives us access to the uh, thermostat housing. Uh, before you want to, before you do anything, uh, you're going to have to drain your coolant um, at least halfway. Um, you're still going to have a little bit of a mess after you open it, but uh, it won't be a severe gushing of of coolant everywhere. Um, and then you're going to have to refill your 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 filling your whole all your coolant your whole cooling system. So. Um, I know it looks like a spaghetti a mess here, but I got full range here to access the uh, thermostat housing, which is right here. Um, it's held on by uh, <clears throat> three 10 millimeter bolts. Um, but before doing that and you know doing all that, you know you drain your coolant, and then you want to make make sure you get complete and full access to this area here. 
Um, and by doing that, what I'm going to do is just uh, release all the electrical uh, plugs here, um, all your connectors. There's a connector right here for the coolant here. Um, and then there's a bracket over here on this side that we're going to have to remove this bracket because this bracket is actually piece uh, part of the uh, housing for the thermostat and then uh, and then your radiator hose is right over here. So we're just going to unconnect all this um, and then you can connect it better uh, back later. Um, now I know these connectors that fit in here they become brittle over time. Um, trust me I know I've replaced plenty of them. Um, you know, you can buy the original stuff or you can actually just, you know, put stuff back together like this and just zip tie it on. It's just as good. So I'm going to start there as I'm going to disconnect this one sensor here on top. And then I already unclipped all these and then I uh, took off the sensor over here just so I can get this harness fully loose and kind of all the way so I don't damage it. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over there and I'm going to remove that hose. And I already got the clamp loose. So um, it's just a matter of me pulling it off. And I'm going to just drop it down to pull it aside. And then next we'll just work over here again. Um, we're going to remove this uh, bolt here. That's to the head of the engine. It's a 12 millimeter. That's going to loosen up that that bracket on there and it goes to our coolant housing so make sure not to yank on this as it it has a fitting that goes into here okay so um that's there for a reason i'm going to switch over to a 10 millimeter and i'm going to start and this engine is a little bit different because it has a cable system, kind of a tray that comes all the way up front and, and bolts onto the front or the top of the housing here. Um, on newer V6s, there is um, another connection there. Uh, I believe it's a wiring connection that you're going to have to remove too, so it's somewhat similar. see if it gives us enough room to remove this and kind of get it down all the way and that's all you really want is to actually just kind of pull it away slightly so it gives us enough room to uh, pull out the housing so now I'm gonna start with the bottom nut um, it's a little bit uh, it's kind of tough to get to what I use is I use a little swivel I use a short extension and then a swivel extension and I'm just gonna go in here yeah, I'm going to try to get it set on that nut. side and get one more extension on this. Um, we can use regular hand tools as well. Um, they're not torqued on there real tight. Remember they're only 10 millimeter nuts so it doesn't take much to remove them. Uh, the only thing is I want to get my hand under here and make sure I don't use that that nut.
see they're real small. So now we got two more to go. Get my extension here. And I'm gonna guide my socket here to uh, to where it's at. There we go. Contact. stayed on the stud. All right, number two. And then we got the easy one, the top one. All right, there's the last one. Down side organized, and now it's a matter of making sure you got the clearance to to pull it out. So I'm gonna grab it here. It has to have a little bit of fluid in there, not much. And you want to do? Want to try to give yourself enough room as possible to get to where the thermostat is actually at. So. Just like so. Yeah, you can expect this ring. Uh, this one's very clean. Alright, so now thermostat's right in here. What we gotta do is try to wiggle it out. And if it's stiff, get a pair of pliers or a screwdriver. And since we're replacing it, it comes out like this. So here she is. The part replaced. This one looks like it's a original thermostat. So let's go. We're replacing it. It still works, but uh, we're replacing it anyway, so it doesn't matter. All right. So one thing to look at on the new thermostat is what I like to do is if you have any coolant nearby, I like to get a little bit of coolant on my on my fingers and kind of rub it around the new gasket. Now when you buy these from the, from the manufacturers, which is, this one's Toyota, uh, they usually come with the gasket already. Now, I've seen where if you buy it at an independent parts store, that they only sell you the thermostat without the gasket. So you gotta pay attention to that because you want to replace the gasket at all, at all times. If you're gonna replace this, you can go to the trouble replace it, you know, buy the gasket, it's three or four dollars. So, uh, before we put this back in, uh, it's worth noting that this one has a little bleed system here for air and this is always supposed to be facing up and when you put put anything back in okay so always facing up um, you know air rises and that's where you know it goes through so make sure that's up so now it's just a matter of reaching in here and snug it back in place Just like so and that's pretty much it everything else is just reassembly we put everything back together here Now you can torque these on by hand. It doesn't have to be really tight. Uh, just hand, hand tighten it. Remember what you're working with here. You're working with a 10 millimeter nut. Uh, you don't need a torque wrench for this. Don't kill it. Don't stomp on it. You know, don't do nothing stupid. Just regular kind of hand tight type of stuff. So um, I'll start all these nuts by hand. Um, this can become tedious. So if you have something magnetized, um, please use it. Especially with the bottom one, it's it's a long reach. 
Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and use my extension and pray that it kind of stays on it or I can cheat it with a piece of paper. I have one around here. Paper. Got to get a little bit of shop towel. And I'm going to press this in it. And that's going to hold it in place. It's not going to go anywhere. So that way I can snake it back in here. Now it's a matter of just finding the stud for it. It's going to be a two-hander. All right, so I'll use one hand right underneath the stud and I'll guide this into it. started. Okay, yeah, that one started on there. We'll get the next one. I'll do the same thing. What I want to do is get the thread started on these. back and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a hand I'm not going to use a power tool on it I'm going to use a wrench because I want to be able to feel that I'm not over torquing these I'm going to just snug them up slowly so they come evenly There you go. They're all tight. You see that I didn't over torque them. Uh, you just want to get them, you know, somewhat tight. You got to get a feel for it. Now it's a matter of just putting everything back, all your sensors and your intake, uh, reverse order. And um, I'll just get this wire loom on real quick. For this wire, wire cable system that they have. All right, the next, the next thing that uh, you want to watch out for is when you're putting back on 
the uh, the coolant tube here with a bracket to the head. Uh, we want to make sure that is fully secure in place. Um, if not, um, what happens is what it does it keeps pressure. Uh, well, this tube it, it keeps the uh, the tube from actually shooting off. Okay, so there's pressure that builds up in here that locks it in place. So that bracket here and the thermostat housing hold it together like this. Okay, so if you don't put that bolt in. Chances are you're going to have a lot of rattle and that tube is going to go flying out. So it's very important to make sure that's bolted back in. And that's it. So off camera here, I'll finish it up. Uh, that's pretty much the end of the video. Um, I'm just going to reconnect all my sensors, uh, make sure the wire harness is up where it's supposed to be. Um, and that's pretty much it. So for you all, uh, make sure you refill your coolant, um, check for leaks. I'm pretty sure you're not going to have any leaks. Um, as long as you got them hand tight, it should not leak. Um, and run the car, make sure you got the right coolant level. And happy driving. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned to the next one.